Now, folks are worrying development with debts built up during the pandemic and added costs due to soaring inflation. One in three of Britain's pubs could close next year. So how do you save this great and essential national institution? Let's talk to drinks expert and pubs champion Andrew Morgan, star of the brilliant Ideal World Home Shopping TV channel. Andrew, how worried should we be? Well, I think we can all agree that we don't want to lose pubs. We've lost a lot already. You know, pre-pandemic, there was already a slide into kind of pubs just disappearing. And I think, you know, the price of beer was always something that's been, you know, measured uh, just as a general view of how things were. And I remember the, the £4 pint was like, oh, my God, the £4 pint. Now you're looking at £6.50, £7. You know, there are a lot more reasons that pubs have to be better. And I think we've lost a lot of pubs that maybe we didn't need. I think, mm. again, going, going back in time, I think there are a lot of managed pubs that didn't really sparkle, you know, and they should. And when, when a British pub is perfect, like when, you know, the reason people come to this country and want to have a pint in a, in a lovely glass with, with a wood panelling and all the ambience that is there. I, I mean, I am going to say queuing at the bar, maybe, maybe not quite so much. And I think there's a whole etiquette there that I still don't quite understand. I never get served. I seem to just, you know, be invisible. But um, overall, I think, you know, we, we need to realise that they are in trouble, mm. that, that we need to think about, I think, how we how we think of our money, you know? So, so if we are, you know, for, the, for those that are commuting um, and only going on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, you know, the money you're saving on a Monday and a Friday from your sandwich and your coffee and whatever, just book a pub at six o'clock on a Friday night, bookend your weekend, go down there, friends, strangers, just, just go and support a, you know, a, a venue that's near to you that, that you that you love and can and can fall in love with. Definitely. And of course you can go to Tesco or Sainsbury's and, and you can get cans of Cronenberg, like a whole pint can for about a quid. It's a fraction of the cost of what, what you get when you go down the pub. But as a special occasion, nothing beats going to your local boozer. Um, you get to meet your neighbours, make some friends, listen to some great live music, maybe have some food as well. It's very communal. So I think it's a great thing. And, and I'm the son of a landlord, so this, this runs very deep for me. My dad uh, ran a pub in Camden for four decades with my mum. So, you know, it's very, very... It's very important that we save our pubs. And the issue is that when they're gone, they don't come back. Those buildings get repurposed, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's planning consent to try and stop that from happening, but mm. it's inevitable. I mean, if, if you're... I think it's, it comes down to community. I think we, we definitely came from a place where your village pub was where the community went to. And we've had, certainly the last few years with, with, with lockdown, you know, this, the, the pubs have been closed. They've been almost presented as places of danger, you know, that, that, we, that mm. we should feel... Un uncertain about socialising, really. And, you know, coming here tonight, walking through London on a Friday and seeing the, the seas of people just drinking and enjoying themselves. And I think, you know, in, in today's world, it's not really about how, how drunk you're going to get. You know, there's so many great alcohol-free options that it's just remembering that sociability is important. And, and you know, even again, during lockdown, people were buying their booze from, um, uh, from new, uh, news agents and, 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 you know, shops and drinking them on park benches because they wanted... It was great to see that people wanted to... To, to be with each other, and, and they would find a way to do it. I think, you know, if we look at what the pub is, a good wet lead pub, a good scampy fries, some crisps, you know, that communal opening of bags, everything that, that again, we quite take for granted, but, um, you know, we don't want the pub to go the way of Woolworths and Debenhams and yeah. all of those British institutions that actually, you know, maybe could have been saved, but the pub needs to be given um, more of a... Just, just more for everyone to go and use it, you know, use it or lose it. It really feels like that. Well, I know that so many of my viewers and listeners are great loyalists of their own pub and they understand the importance of it. We actually host a lot of shows in pubs on GB News because we think it's the best way to connect with a community. Nigel's done it. Lee Anderson is starting a new show next week at 8 o'clock. I'm going back to 9 to 11. And, and that, that uh, brilliant show will be, will be at various public houses. And it is, it's part of the infrastructure of our society. It's our history. Um, the thing is, it's, it's what happened particularly during the pandemic and the awful treatment of both restaurateurs and pub landlords. Yeah. Uh, given the fact that you had these bizarre rules, the, was it the 10 o'clock curfew? Oh, there was, there was the scotch egg, wasn't there? There was, the there, there was a substantial egg. meal. Then you've got the number of people. You've got the pre-booking. I mean, everything. Hospitality, you know, coming from the hospitality industry, it really got kicked around. I think, you know, especially the, the late-night venues especially. But your general pub, I mean, that, that whole issue of indoor, outdoor, you know, I'm not taking away from uh, mitigating risk um, and, and everything, but the, the cost to 
not just the, the, the businesses that have had deferred rates um, and rents, and, and now they're going to have to pay them, right? And, and if you've got deep pockets, you can see it through. And we can see you know, places like Weatherspoons that are, that are going bigger and bigger and bigger. And mm. volume is so important. If you've got a venue and you can get a lot of people through, prices can come down. That's why they can sell their beer so cheaply, because they've got so many people going through them. The smaller pubs, the ones that, that haven't got that, that ability to do that, those are the ones that actually, yet yeah, you may pay 50p a pound a pint more, mm. but look at what you're getting. Look at the, again, the people that you're supporting, the, the people that, that are running the pubs, the, you know, the, the people that are brewing the beer, the brew, every, everything. It is, it would be, we would all really regret seeing pubs close more than they need to. Definitely, and I love Weatherspoons, and I think the pub chains do a great job, and I admire Tim Martin. And, and, and actually, he would argue that he wants the small pubs to su survive and thrive as well. He's always been very fair in yeah, that way. He completely he's, agree. It's not like Starbucks trying to, you know, destroy the opposition. Um, and actually, he, he, he has pointed to data that suggests that when he opens Weatherspoons in a town, it boosts footfall for the other pubs as well, because it yeah. just brings more people to the area. Um, but, yeah, lots of these businesses... You mentioned the, the deferred rates, the bounce-back loans. Uh, these businesses are carrying a lot of debt. Can the government do more to help our pubs? Well, we've certainly got new um, uh, taxes that are coming in in August with a, with a draft uh, reduction. So, so pubs are, for the first time, going to get a reduced amount of, of duty versus... Um, what, is that on draft beer? On draft beer. And, and, it and appears, nothing so, beats a draft pint. I mean, you, you can't... The, the, the iconic British pint where you're, pull, you're, you know, you're pulling that hand pump and you're pouring by gravity from a cellar... You're getting me going now. You can't, I know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's exciting. And, and there's nothing at home that can, can replicate that. I think, you know, there are many... You can say, well, it's the same same liquid in, in the the same beer in the in the in the bottle as it is in the, in the pub. It's not, you know, because there's all those things that, that that aren't in the glass that make that experience so much more worthwhile. I could give you a glass of vintage champagne, put in the middle of could a, you? a I, I, well, not not right now, put in the middle of a roundabout, um, serve in a plastic cup, yeah. and you'd be there going, oh, you know, this 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 is all. Well, this and this problem with drinking at home, you know, is I, I could sort of crack open a, a cold Budweiser. I've got Mrs. Dolan yelling at me about emptying the dishwasher and. Sorting yep. out a crooked shelf or something. And that's the other great thing about the pub. It's an escape. It is. It's somewhere to go. Yeah, you have to leave the house. I think there's, there's, it's, you know, there's endless conversations with, with uh, my friends and, and, and people in the industry about the fact that staying at home is not the answer for everything. It's, it's lovely to have some, uh, a bit of a balance. And again, go back five years and the mm -hmm. idea of having flexible working would have been completely ridiculous. Like you'd have been, you'd have been told no. But now, you know, we've got, we've got the, an ability to choose. And I think, you know, my wife has got a new job. She's got, she got the choice to how much she wants to commute into town. She's looking at three, four days a week because she wants to experience the, the unknown, the sense of what might happen, you know? And when you're sitting in front of a computer in a room, there's nothing going to change. You want to meet the people, have that water cooler moment. You want to go down the pub. You want to talk to somebody. You want to let, let the, you know, roll the dice and let life happen. And the pub, you know, who, who hasn't got great stories of the pub? And, and not always stories of regret, mm -hmm. but, you know, meeting people and, and having that, you know, that, that real sort of charm and, and, and we're very good at it, you know? I think the British are great drinkers in pubs. Well, we definitely are. And it's not only about booze, as you say. I, I've got an occasional ritual with my youngest son, which is we go and have a full English at our local Weatherspoons on a Saturday morning. Great experience. Fantastic. Yeah, and there's a couple of the, the, old, the old lads who have a few pints, but then as most people are just having coffee and Diet Coke, and that's what makes the world go round. Uh, listen, give me a quick word on the ideal world Home shopping channel. That's where you work now. Yeah, indeed. So um, it's it's a uh, these channels are massive, aren't they're, they? They're fantastic. I mean, it's 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 a great hybrid between going into a store and getting a professional demonstrating what something does. So so you know you've got hour-long programs that are going to have either one or variety of products on there, and we get the chance. And and as a, as a food and drink expert, you know, I'm there selling boxes of wine or coffee machines, or and I get to actually you know open the bottles and talk about it and. Turn, you know, make a cup of coffee and, sh and show people how amazing these things are. And then, now it's not like picking up the phone, you just go online and, and put your order in, and generally it's, you know, free shipping and clear pay payments and all those sort of things to, to, to make it so you can really have confidence to buy in a way that I don't think most of those average internet stores, you know, they, they're very convenient, but they're not really very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, it's an amazingly fun place to, 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 to be working at. I, I'm going to give the Ideal World Home Shopping TV channel I'm going to give it a go. Please do. But I'm going to have one rule. I'm not going to watch it when I've had a drink. 
No, that's the danger. They, they, yeah. they're, they're on ITV um, in the early hours, and, and I think there, there could be a few people who are a slightly different consumer who's yeah, coming I, in and I, I, I don't making wanna, those purchases. I don't want to wake up one morning and find out that a tractor has been delivered. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, uh, my sincere thanks to pubs champion, drinks expert and star of the Ideal World Home Shopping TV channel, Andrew Morgan. The campaign starts here, Save Britain's Pubs. And all we've got to do is have the occasional pint in one. Not too much to ask, especially tonight on this very thirsty Friday night.